guys will be able to pick up on on what not to do so this i'm not just wasting rounds in here please don't do it right all right eyes and ears so the first thing is to without any structure behind or on this rifle at all i'm gonna fire just one wait, round wait, wait, wait. i'm gonna fire just one round and i want you using my shoulder as a reference watch the nose of the gun and then you can look as as my shoulder as a reference how far this muzzle just kicked or i'm sorry the buttstock kicked back firing that one round all right so it, it didn't jump back 12 feet just because nobody's behind it but what the nose of the gun do it rose and there's no reason to shoot another gun or a round but by me controlling the front end of the gun and leveraging right from thumb to pinky high to low leverage i'm gonna keep it again and i'm just controlling now the front end of the gun still no control over the rear now what did it do it's straight back but did it really jump as far as it did initially no so how much did of the rearward recoil that's exhibited on this rifle in this demonstration how much rearward recoil did it have is with just a front connection that is leveraged that's quantifiable to my little brain for sure. So, and that's, yeah, it barely moves, right? So I can control it here. So what I'm getting at is I don't need to, as soon as I get that rifle shoulder connection, pull it back into me. Because normally what I'm seeing with guys who are uh, thinking that the bracing of the gun into the body, what it's gonna do is absorb and mitigate recoil through the body better and disperse it better. It's actually, you're, you're just coming lazy at the front end of the gun where it could be mitigated prior to entering the body. So you're absorbing a lot less. Think of rounds two, three, four, five, not just six, but also rounds 12, 13, 14, 15, because hey, we're a force multiplier, not just within the, the ammo capacity of this weapon system and capabilities, but the gas system, it's literally mitigating for you. We don't have that with the pistol. That's why we have to spend so much time within the grip, debunking all these theories and building good principle structure behind our grip with the pistol. The rifle does it for you, the majority of that recoil impulse. So connecting, I'm just connecting and seating and building structure behind. Structure behind is not elbows out, it's elbows down in line with the gun. And as I bring this elbow from out to in line, watch the, watch the movement of the buttstock as I rotate this elbow down in line with the gun. Notice the sling tension is now built at the nose of the gun and I'm rotating from the pocket of the shoulder while the optic is in line with my eye, I'm rotating it back and in, giving the structure. So I'll, do I really need to pull it into me? No. What you're finding is when I see guys pulling their gun into you, literally white knuckled and pull, I'm literally just watching their dominant side shoulder get shifted offline from the target or the objective that they intend to engage. So what it's doing is now giving a path the least resistance to that energy that they re the, uh, from that recoil impulse, right? So how I'm going to negate that is I, like I said, rifle to shoulder connection is from the optic in line with the eye, seated placement and good structure from back here. From there, I'm gonna come under my sling over top and leverage from high point of leverage, the thumb to low point of leverage, the pinky, put that weapon on safe and fire one round with everything in line. Is there any movement to that weapon system at all? Zero, right? And because of that, I'm able to fire multiple rounds very, very, very quickly, very, very efficiently and accountably. Now, what not to do, go riding with recoil, literally jerking off from the gun, fire one round, literally just rode the recoil. No, absolutely none uh, right here, right? This was, this was famous back in the day, right? No recoil management here, nose of the gun just rose. And then if I just grossly grip with absolutely no leverage, same thing, it rises a lot more than when I just leverage the front end of that gun. Tara, that was the exception for the magwell because you were left-handed, only in prone, you were okay. inducing malfunctions. I wouldn't hold it standing no, like that. No, that was just okay. prone to reduce Yep, it. and you got the emissary grip, so you can get some serious torque leverage on there. Now, one round's all well and good. Now let's do multiple rounds. So you're gonna get a pause, prep, press. Where our eyes, when we were isolating the grip and stance and posture yesterday with the pistol, where our eyes and our sights. Were our eyes and our sights when we were isolating stance, grip, posture? No, no they were looking where? Oh. Straight down at our stance yeah. and grip and posture, right? So same thing with the rifle. Once I get that rifle to shoulder connection, I'm going to come out. I'm gonna get that command to pause, prep, and press on that trigger. And on that signal of beep, I'm gonna fire three to five rounds. So I square my hips, look down at my posture, look down at my stance, and engage three to five rounds on signal. Pause, prep. 
right? And there's minimal movement to the rear, minimal rise and fall of that, right? Once the posture's good, and I'm no longer saying this, because this is what I sometimes see. Guys are standing up tall and erect, and now the weight's back on the heels. This is what will happen. Pause prep. Oh shit, I feel that, I now see that, I now mitigate for it, right? Never gonna do that again. Now, good aggressive stance, hips and shoulders are now in line. Sometimes I see guys come up where their hips are now pointed at like one o'clock. Drive, literally just flex your ass cheek, your right ass cheek forward, so that your hips are now set in line with that, the shoulders and perpendicular of the gun. From there, I'm gonna get behind the gun. Now I'm going to focus on this front side grip, not in my sights, my head's completely off the gun. I reduced my, or I lost my fourth point of contact. Now I'm focusing on just the leverage I can achieve on the front of the gun, utilizing that sling tension running over the radius bone. Pause prep. Right, no movement to the rear and no rise and fall of that um, muzzle, right? That's the goal, that's what we're trying to achieve within this isolation drill. Any questions over this? All right, let's go ahead and do it.